This video was brought to you in part by the supporters of the AMTV Patreon. Thank you. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another installment of Tat from the TARDIS. And as you probably guessed from the title, the topic of this week's Tat is figurines, specifically Doctor Who figurines. Now, the Doctor Who figurine collection has been going since, I think, like 2013, 2014. I do remember it starting, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't particularly interested. I wasn't really into, like, models or figurines at the time. A bit more so now, but nothing crazy. And I noticed on the Eagle Moss website, which is the company who makes them, for Cyber Monday, they were doing uh, some good deals, so I picked up a bunch that I thought looked pretty cool. Um, my first one, actually, before Cyber Monday was this little fella. This is a Navarino, and if you don't recognize it instantly from being from Doctor Who, I'd forgive you because this little guy only appeared for about five seconds in a story. It was the 1987 story Delta and the Bannermen. Uh, yeah, literally five seconds of screen time, that's, that's all you get. But the, the legends at Eagle Moss decided, yeah, let's make a figure. And I, I love him so much. I love how, um, how funny his design is. And uh, justice for the Navarinos. Bring Russell T. Davies, when you come back, you bring back the Navarinos, okay? So after loving the Navarino design and what they'd done with it, I decided to have a look. Now, I know these figures often get berated for not looking very good. Uh, they are quite small in stature, and I know a lot of the humanoid figures, so say of the Doctors or Companions or humanoid villains like the Master... Um, sometimes they look a bit funny, to say the least. But from what I've seen, the monster designs uh, look very impressive to me. And so, yeah, in Cyber Monday, I decided to pick up a bunch of them. So I will take you through them and show you what I got. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so first up, we have Grand Marshal Skaldak, the Ice Warrior. This is from the uh, 2013 episode Cold War, which saw the Ice Warriors make their return to Doctor Who after nearly 40 years, which still feels insane that it was that long. Guy in got the red eyes there and the mouth, and the, the detail I think looks really good on this, considering, again, like the size of it. Uh, you've got the detail on his arms there, there's the back, and the thing about all these figures is, on the bottom, you have it, so, well, this one just calls him an Ice Warrior, but it specifies that he's from Cold War. There have been other Ice Warrior releases. I believe there's one of the Ice Warrior Queen from Empress of Mars, and one of the original... Ice Warrior leader Varga in just the Ice Warriors from the 60s. So, you know, there's more out there. And also the thing about these figurines, just set that to one side, they all came with a magazine. So this is the one that Skaldak came in. This is issue 9 from 2013. So it's got the title of the story, um, a little phrase, I guess, Gods and Demons, the Doctor it was, and its transmission date, which, of course, was the 13th of April 2013. Martian Menace, Grand Marshal Skaldak. So... Yeah, this must have come out not long after the Cold War episode itself. So, but yeah, if you're a fan of the Ice Warriors and you like their modern design, then I think you'll like a little old Skaldak here. But again, the classic options are there for you too. So for part 15, you have Omega from the Three Doctors there from John Pertwee's time. You got the design of his mask there, which is pretty damn faithful to the original and his, and his pointy head and his gold-like chest plate thing. You got his cloak looking over on the back. That's a lovely design as well. I love how they've designed, they've kept faithful to the design of the mask and the cloak there. And of course, on the bottom, it states he is indeed Omega from the Three Doctors, which was the premiere of season 10. You can get the later design of Omega as well from Ark of Infinity. I decided not to go for that. I might get him in the future, but I love this original Omega design. And it means a lot to me too, being that the Three Doctors is my first classic Who story that I watched. So that's rather special. And just to look at the, the front of the magazine, dead quick, there he is. There's Omega as seen on screen from the Three Doctors. The solar system, it says, wonderful. Or maybe it's the featurettes inside. This is the Third Doctor. Episode 1 went out on the 30th of December 1972. Creator of time travel, Omega, Time Lord Hero. The Timeless Child might have something to say about that. Jumping quite a few issues now, we're going to look at the Teller, which was a, a beast from the Series 8 episode Time Heist in 2014. Just to bring him up closer to you, there he is. He's got his uh, lovely two-eyed design, which are on like two big stalks. He's unfortunately in this straight jacket, but again, the attention to detail on the suit is really good, I think. I like the fact they've got the, the bright, vibrant colours of it as well. Really cute little character he was. And then this is indeed the Teller 
from Time Heist, as it says on the bottom there. Yeah, I really like this figure. This is one example, I think, where it really shows the monster designs look a lot better on these figurines than necessarily like the more humanoid ones, like any of the Doctors. So that's a plus for me. And just looking at the front of the magazine, there is the Teller, as you'd see him. Time Heist, Telepathic Terror. The 12th Doctor aired on 20th of September 2014. The Doctor Turns Thief. That is indeed the Teller. And yeah, this must have come out not long after the episode. So yeah, any Time Heist fans? It's the Teller. Next up, we have a Cyberman. I, I mean, it was a Cyber Monday deal. How could I not? This is a Cyberman design first seen in the Moon Base. So it's nice that they've gone through the different... Cyberman designs and I also just like how they've how they've done him here so as you can see you've got the like his eyes and mouth look great the handlebars on the head the chest units there all the various pipes the uh, three fingered design if you can see that the ball joints on the bottom there I just think he looks really good there's a shot of him from the back with that cyber booty and that's a sentence I should never say again and uh, just looking at the bottom this is indeed a Cyberman from the moon base so there you go, little little Cyberman action there, and the front of the front of the mag for this one. This is part 53. I love how they call it parts instead of issues. Shows them there from the moon base from 1967. Yeah, really cool. So yeah, if there was uh, there was several Cybermen designs you can get. I think they've actually done all of them from the series. So really cool to have the moon base one. I clearly couldn't just have one character from the three Doctors, so why not go for a second? This is the Gelgard or Gelgard as some people call them, who. Uh, Guard Omega's palace in his alternate reality and this guy as you can see he's quite a blobby little thing looks like he's got a lot of big zists on him these guys yeah they're a bit silly but I've got a big sweet spot for them they do have eyes up there somewhere if you can call them eyes they've got their arm which fires uh, projectiles I think yeah they only had the one armor in my head I thought they had two but it seems that they only had the one so I think he's cute I like him and there you go you can see it's a girl guard from the three Doctors as well. Yeah, really cool this figure. Again, really good chance to put the attention to detail on there. And yeah, I love him. He's he's going to stand there right on my shelf. He's, he's cute. He's like the Navarino in that respect. And there you can see him on the front of the cover from part 75, the three Doctors again. Yeah, that's a Gelgard for you. Now you got this guy here. This is a Tetrap from the seventh Doctor's first TV story, which was Time and the Rani. And yeah, this is a good one for like the um, attention to detail, if you like. You could argue his face is ever so slightly squished, but they've managed to get the uh, eye on the back there. They've got the detail on the ears. You've got his gun, his arm, and the sort of clothes he wears. And on the bottom, of course, this is a Tetrap from Time of the Rani. I know the main Tetrap that the Rani had. I'm sure he had a name, and I can't remember it. This doesn't seem to be uh, this one. But yeah, I, I like the Tetrap. It's got a soft spot for Time of the Rani as well, so glad to have him here. Just to quickly, again, show you the front cover of the mag. Uh, that's what they look like on TV, so not too dissimilar to the figure. This is part 101 from Time and the Rani, originally from the 7th of September, 1987. So any Sylvester McCoy fans out there, particularly fans of season 24, I think you'll really enjoy having a Tetrap on your shelf. Next up, we have the Cheetah People from the final classic Doctor Who story, Survival. And uh, yeah, once again, I mean, look at this. Look at this detail on here. You've got all the like little accessories that they wore. They've done it to the best of their ability, I think, considering how small these figs are. And the, the body itself looks quite good. Again, all the attention to detail like, on the, the fur and the accessories. Again, I know I haven't got the best eyesight, so some of you can rib me for this, but I really like this design. Survival is, without a doubt, in my opinion, one of the best classic serials out there. So really glad that the Cheetah people got some recognition in there as well and you can see on the bottom there when it focuses this is indeed a cheetah person from survival so that's really cool the front of the mag for this one accurately displays the cheat we didn't get the horse which is a shame this is part 109 first seen on the 22nd of november 1989 before the very end as it were dun 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 but yes again any sylvester mccoy fans like with the tetrap or if you like survival grab that cheetah person Next up, going straight to Modern Who, we've got one of the Emoji Bots from Smile, because they're just so darn cute, aren't they? I know Smile isn't everyone's favourite episode, um, it's not one of my favourites either, but I do quite enjoy this. I mean, look at him, he's, he's adorable, you've got the little angry face there, I'll try and bring that in, let's see. So you've got his little face there with the two, the two skulls, and he, you've got his little like podgy design that he's got, all the little mechanisms as well. 
There's that on the back. And when we look down there, this is indeed the emoji bot from Smile. So yeah, even if it's not your favorite app, this is, again, quite a fun design. A great example, I think, again, of when the humanoid designs don't work as well, but the robotic ones do. They work really well, in my opinion. So I'll just put him there. Uh, there's the front cover. Of course, that's what he looks like in the episode. This is from Smile, which aired on the 22nd of April 2017. So I'm guessing at this point, this was coming out either in tandem or quite close to the transmission of Series 10. So yeah, if you enjoy Series 10, and I know a lot of you do, and you like the emoji bots, that's for you. Here's one I didn't expect to see, which is the Chief Clown from The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, uh, another Seventh Doctor adventure. And I know this character's more humanoid, but I've got to say, I think his design here actually works quite well with what they've done with him. Just to give you a bit of a zoom in there, like his face is still quite creepy as he is in the story. And of course, he's got his little performance outfit on there as well. He's throwing up the, throwing up the peace sign by the looks of it. There's the attention to detail on the back. He has his little hat on. And the stamp there says this is the Chief Clown from The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. So, yeah, this sort of broke my mold on the humanoid ones, really. I don't know, I just really like this design of the Chief Clown here. It really works well for me. And this, of course, this story was written by Stephen Wyatt, who I did an interview with over on AMTV Radio, so I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. And just to show you the front cover, they've changed the logo. This is when the Whitaker era logo came in, so this must have came out 2018 time. It's part 147 and originally aired on the 14th of December 1988. So again, McCoy fans, Chief Clown fans, this is certainly, when it focuses in, there we go. That's the figure for you. Golgeth. Next up taken to the proverbial stage is the Android from Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. Obviously based off Anne Robinson as her role as host from The, the Weakest Link. And again, being a robot, this one's pretty faithful. You've got the orange-like head plate, the red eyes, the uh, the mouthpiece with where the with where the gun is, the sort of like black dress design. You've even got the wires coming out of the back to simulate that, which I think is a really nice touch. So yeah, if you're a fan of the Android, and how can you not be? Um, I just thought again, really cool one to to pick up there. This, of course, as it as I said, is from Bad Wolf: Parting of the Ways. That's what she looks like in the episode. This is part 160, first seen on the 11th of June. 2005 good god i remember it well 16 years ago over so any night doctor fans or if you like the parting of the ways bad wolf you got the android next up you have this fella this is the alien ambassador from the third doctor story the ambassadors of death a seven parter and one of my favorite doctor who stories ever i know some people find it a bit long but i adore this story and this is one of the uh, ambassadors in an earth space suit now, normally on the spacesuit, you can't really see it here, but there's a UK flag and it says Michaels on it. Uh, that is replicated here, though. It's very small. I had to really, like, squint my eyes to see it properly. But again, really cool. I mean, that's an iconic look, isn't it? The ambassador clad in a spacesuit, arms outstretched, ready to get you. So there's the back as well of, like, the spacesuit design. And just to show you on the bottom, this is the alien ambassador from the Ambassadors of Death, which is wonderful. So, yeah, I really like this. Again, with it being one of my favorite stories, I almost felt like, come on, I, I had to get this one. I'm surprised it took them so long to do that because this is actually part uh, 181, would you believe? There's what it looks like. See, it says uh, Michaels with the UK flag there. First seen on the 21st of March, 1970. So after over 180 issues, my boys from the Ambassadors of Death finally finally got some long-deserved representation. Now, going for really modern, here is a Cybermaster from the Series 12 story, The Timeless Children, which obviously came out in 2020. And I know, you know, you can meme them all you want. Not everyone likes the Cybermaster design or even the concept, I should say. But let's take a look. Again, bear in mind, this is a really small figurine. I actually really like the detail on here. You've still got, like, the Gallifrey and patterns on the, the headpiece there. You've got the Cybermen helmet designs as they were mixed with the old Cybermen design. And they've got the, the, the robes and stuff, you know. And then you can see that carries on to the back. And just to show you, as always, uh, this is indeed the Cybermaster from the Timeless Children. Now, obviously, some people find this really silly. And I've just got to say, is this really the silliest thing Doctor Who's ever done? Really? And it's near, you know, 60-year history. You're telling me the Cybermasters are the weirdest or worst thing that's ever happened? I mean, that's your opinion. I respectfully disagree. I actually really quite like the design. I think it's really cool. So, again, it's probably the most modern of the figurine collection I've decided to get. And just looking at the mag, there he is, looking a bit sad with his sad face. But yeah, you can see what the Cybermaster's meant to look like from the Timeless Children, broadcast on the 1st of March 2020. Not that long ago at all, really, is it? So any Jodie era fans, or if you just like the Cybermasters, I'd recommend this. Really nice little figurine. 
Next up, yes, your eyes do not deceive you. This is Mestor, the villain from The Six Doctor's First Story, The Twin Dilemma. Now, I know I'm known as a bit of a Twin Dilemma defender or a Twin Dilemma stan. I do like it compared to a few of the Doctor Who stories, but this is the villain, the slug-like Mestor. You can see he's got his antennas. There's some aden um, attention to detail in his face there, which I think is fairly screen accurate, again, given the size. I don't know what to tell you, man. As a Twin Dilemma fan, I felt like I had to get something to represent my, my sheer love for the story, and what better thing to get than the villain of the piece himself. Now, as you can see, there is what he looks like in the in the story. Still slug-like and pretty horrible. This is part 196, inching towards 200, uh, and it was first seen on the 22nd of March, 1984. So there you go. So if you like me, if you have a soft spot for the twin dilemma, then show Mester some love. Next up, you have this chap who is a cloister wraith which, if you're not too familiar, was first seen in Hell Bent when the Doctor's on Gallifrey. These are well, sort of like guards, I think, if I remember, of the Matrix and things like that. If you look very closely, I'll try and zoom in. You might not be able to see it, but on the there's meant to be like some sort of face or hologram on where the headpiece is there, and I think that's a really cool little detail that they decided to, well, to try and put on there anyway. You've got on its... Uh, shoulders there like the seals of Rassilon, the classic Time Lord headpiece, scrolling down like some old bedraggled Time Lord robes, which I think is a really nice effect if you ask me. So overall, I was happy with that. And again, since I'm one of those who doesn't like hate Hellbent, as you can see, it is from Hellbent, as this so states. So yeah, I don't hate Hellbent, and considering I love Capaldi in his era, this felt fitting to, to get for me. So yeah, got myself a good old little cloister wraith there from Hellbent. And if you don't believe me, there's what he looks like in the episode. There's that screaming face I mentioned. First seen on the 5th of December, 2015. Feels like so long ago now when Hellbent came out, but it wasn't really, was it? So, yeah, any Capaldi fans, any Hellbent fans, you got a cloister wraith. We're nearly there, folks. This is a Primord, or Primord, however you want to pronounce it. This is from the third Doctor story, Inferno, another one of my favourite Doctor Who stories. And, uh, yeah, again, another one where he looks like more humanoid, but I think the design is really good. I'll just try and zoom in a bit on him here. So you can see on his face there, he's, I think that still looks fairly screen accurate compared to some of the other models I've seen for, like, certain Doctors and things like that. So I I really like this design, personally. Um, you see he's still got his little... Uh, the thing on his suit there, and just twizzling him round. There's the full design. Green, the green man, as the Australian continuity announcer says. And it is a Prime mod from Inferno. So yeah, again, with Inferno being one of my favourites, I felt like it was an absolute must to grab the Prime mod. And he was actually the release before the Navarino, so that was quite fitting for me. And just to show you, uh, here he is. There is the Prime mod as he looks. This is part 203. Uh, first seen on the 9th of May, 1970. So yeah, any Inferno fans, Pertwee fans, you can't say you're not being catered for because you got yourself a Primord. And the last one that I got is actually quite special. This is a special release. This is a War Machine from the 1966 story, The War Machines. And uh, as you can see, he's much bigger than a lot of his uh, other figurine counterparts that we've looked at. There he is with his two his two little eyes, his mouth. He's number nine, War Machine number nine. He's got his little satellite thing on the top, his little uh, basher arm, or whatever you want to call it. His uh, jet things on the front there, which is uh, really cool. Oh, you got the designs on the side, all those classic like computer workings and the dials. Even like the nuts and bolts it was probably held together with. You've got the wheel on the front there. And I think it's the same on this side, yeah, lots of computers and... There's the back, number nine is everywhere. Love how the, the, there's a little door, which is probably what the poor actor had to be inside there. Um, on the bottom, you can see uh, this is a war machine from the war machines. And I love this. I mean, I love the sort of big chunky box design of him and how he's, he's just so in that 60s era of like technological advancement. Like today, you could argue the poor war machine looks a little dated, like if you put him on TV now, but... It's an iconic design, so uh, yeah, when I saw it again on offer, I just had to grab a War Machine. There are different special releases like this, where you can get monsters in slightly bigger sizes, like there's the Dragon from Dragonfire, I believe the Gravis from Frontios is coming out soon, and there's various others, like you can get TARDIS consoles, you can get certain Daleks, certain Doctors, so go and check it out if you're curious. And just to quickly show you the front of the mag, there he is, there's the War Machine itself. Uh, this was first seen on the 25th of June, 1966. So out of all my purchases, I'm happy with all of them, but the one I'm probably happiest with, it's got to be my, my boy, number nine war machine here. So that in a nutshell is all of the uh, figurines from the figurine collection 
that I own now, including the little Navarino over there. So just under 20 of them. As I said, this was all from a Cyber Monday sale, so I was able to get them for a really good price. And the magazines, despite me thinking they're initially a bit of fluff, the information in these magazines is actually pretty good. And some of the humor is quite self-deprecating, which I really appreciate because that's what we are as Doctor Who fans. But no, really, really great figurines I've got here. I'm really happy with the ones I've got. Maybe I'll get some more if there's another big sale, some more of the monsters and stuff. As I said, I'm not really into getting the more like humanoid ones like any of the doctors or anything like that. But yeah, that's your lot. So yeah, that was the entire haul I got from the figurine collection. I might get some more if there's another deal. There was some that I, I didn't decide to pick up but would like to, to get. I'm in no way going after all like 200 plus of these because one, that would be insane. But also said I don't necessarily want all of them. I, I'm, it's mainly the monsters I'm, I'm loving about this set. So yeah, there's some funny ones upcoming as well. So yeah, maybe there'll be more. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. It really helps us out. And let me know in the comments down below. Are you someone who collects the figurine collection? Have you been there since the beginning? Did you jump on later? Have you never got one before? Are you inspired to now? Let me know all that in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new as well. We'd love to have you aboard. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.